Well, let's get right into it, Richard. Um, we've seen the devastation of, of Hurricane Fiona and what it did around the Atlantic provinces. Uh, give us a little bit of an update on what's going on over there. Well, okay. The, obviously, the relief efforts are starting and underway, recovery. A lot of uh, trees have to be cleared, but there's still many people without power in the, in the Atlantic region. And obviously, some businesses that have been devastated, some uh, fishing businesses that have been absolutely you know, devastated and loss of equipment, farms that uh, have gone through some great challenges. So mm-hmm. there, there's a lot to be done. And I think, and I'll just say this, and I know we've got lots to discuss, but Atlantic Canadians are familiar with storms and they're familiar with rough times. And we have always been the type that would come together in adversity and we're a neighborly friendly bunch. We work hard. And if, if a chainsaw needs to be gotten and you got to clear some stuff away, we'll do that. We'll probably throw the teapot on and have a sandwich <laughs> while we're talking about it as well. It, we're just friendly, good, hardworking people. But one thing Atlantic Canadians are concerned about is many are great and especially politicians that running in when the winds have just swept through. Mm-hmm. And when the storm is just fresh in people's minds. And yes, there's lots of immediate action and glad there's action taking place. But as you know, with any storm, long after the wind subsides, the waves keep coming. And it hits the vessel, it hits the shores. Mm-hmm. And I think what Atlantic Canadians want to know is, will the politicians, will our government be there, not just in the immediate aftermath of the wind, will they be there throughout the waves? And as the waves keep coming, and they have to try and put the businesses back on their feet. And they have to get, you know, their boats back in the water. And they've got to get their farms operational. Will we, as the government, be there for the long haul? Through both the wind and the waves. So. Good point. Um, how do people get to send help? What's your what's your advice to anyone that wants to help out? There are some great organizations, and I know right now the federal government is doing matching funds with the Red Cross, so that's one avenue that, that, that people can go through for sure, a great organization, and they can go through there. And there's other wonderful organizations that are always on the ground in times of disasters, like the Salvation Army and other groups. So definitely, if people can make donations and help, and uh, that means a lot. And if you know of some people or have family that have been directly affected by it, reach out. Uh, sometimes it's in the days and the weeks afterwards when it seems like all the attention wanes, mm-hmm. but they're still stuck cleaning up the mess. Uh, knowing people are thinking of them means a lot. I think the cleanup efforts are, are going to take some time, and, and I would encourage anyone that can help out, please do. Absolutely. Yeah, get in touch with Richard. This is kind of cool. I like the podcast. So yeah. we have <laughs> Jazz, who's got his own podcast. we got The Blueprint. But this really is filling a void that some people are looking for right now. They're looking for that different flavor for rather than the mainstream media that seems right. to have a narrative. I think this is a great idea. Yeah. So I guess the question is, is the government coming through? I, I know we've re- raised in question period a whole bunch of times that they're not coming through with the, the funds needed. Yeah, I think there's areas to it. I mean, obviously, the Premier of Nova Scotia has raised this. Uh, they wanted more troops available on the ground quicker uh, to help clear away the debris. Because if you're without power and you're without water... Uh, 24-hour period is a long time, let alone days and weeks. So let's expedite everything, clear away any hurdles that would be there, and make sure we're working cooperatively with those closest to the situation, including you know the, the provincial government administrations, but also the mayors. But the federal government on its part can make sure the resources are freed up in there, and if there's need for additional, if there's need for additional uh, Canadian Armed Forces presence, make sure that they're loosed up to be able to do those. Well. 